Today, I'm going to be bringing you guys my updated guide for infantry equipment in Rise of Kingdoms because it has been seven months since my last equipment guide. And actually, back in February, the developers made a very meaningful change to the progression of your equipment. And that is that you can now purchase up to two of each complete blueprint in the KVK shop. And also, they increased the number of ways that you can get your hands on the conquest coins. Now, I know, I know I have zero kill points. The fighting, fighting starts tomorrow by the time you're watching this i'll probably be fighting at the time of you watching this but i don't want to hear any comments about no no kill points okay anyway today we're going to be going through the progression of your infantry equipments starting from the very beginning of the game all the way into end game best in slot everything for both open fields and i'm also going to touch a little bit on rally and garrison but mainly and i want to be very honest here this is mainly for open field fighting because i am not a rally or garrison leader so if you are in the top 0.01 percent of the players in rise of kingdoms where you do care about that stuff you probably already know what you're doing in that department but first what's going on guys cheers now really quick drop a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton and i bet you at least one of you thinks you're subscribed but you're not just go ahead and double check i started making youtube videos when i was 13 years old and i've always wanted to hit 100 000 subscribers and i can't do it without you guys so please consider clicking the button you can always unsub later if you stop playing okay let's start with infantry here and as you can see we have a full blue set with the purple legs and everything has a special talent now as you're working towards these blue and purple pieces it is okay to fill in with the green pieces as you're working up there because you can always dismantle the green pieces and use those materials towards your next blue or purple piece and you can do that throughout the entire progression of your equipment the only pieces that you shouldn't be dismantling are the legendary pieces because you don't get all the materials back for those and the blueprints are hard to get so just keep that in mind but as you're progressing it's always important break down the old piece so you can build the new piece you can use those materials to do so just make sure you do the math to ensure that you have enough materials to build the next piece before you break down the old piece with that being said though everything here has a special talent we have the gatekeeper shield with the talent in the weapon slot point for point the gatekeeper shield with the special talent is one of the best pieces in the game because of how cheap it is okay you get ten and a half percent infantry health when it's special talented and for a blue piece this is just one of the best value budget pieces in the game and you're going to use this for a long time you also get the two piece windswept set here which is going to give you a little bit of extra march speed for your infantry which they always are going to need you have the blue gloves and the blue boots the boots giving you a lot of extra health as well and the gloves unfortunately are mostly attack but you get a little bit of health there too and then finally we have a single purple piece here which is the Kurox humility with the special talent this is probably the most important piece of this set because you're going to be using this deep into the end game so the sooner you get your hands on this the sooner that you can kind of consider your infantry legs done until way 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 later these also give you ten and a half percent infantry health which is just compared to everything else in the game it's just so good that it actually outperforms the legendary eternal knight unless you actually get the special talents or one or two iconic upgrades into it so really this purple piece might seem daunting to you as a brand new player but you're going to use it for probably years so it's a great investment from here you can upgrade the gloves this is going to give you more infantry defense as opposed to the attack from the blue gloves get the special talent here this is going to be another great piece this rivals the effectiveness of the set piece gloves right so with the special talent versus the legendary piece without the special talent seven and a half percent infantry defense here is really nice eventually you'll upgrade the boots to the frost treads with the special talent now this isn't as big of an upgrade as the gloves were because this is trading the health for the defense so you get more defense but it's kind of a, a worse stat so it's kind of like a side upgrade you can use the scarlet hounds for quite a long time and in fact I would only consider upgrading to the frost treads if you're able to get that special talent on it pretty much right away and at this point you can see that our stat breakdown is actually really nice we have a lot of health a lot of defense and a small amount of attack plus we still get the march speed from the windswept set and so for an early mid game build this is definitely really solid from here you are going to replace the helmet and the chest piece these are both going to be your purple pieces and this is sort of a transitionary period if you're mega patient you can save up to skip these if you want to but you'll notice that the stat change here takes a little bit of defense away you lose six percent defense but you gain like what 13 percent attack you also lose that march speed as well but all in all from a stat perspective this is just objectively better than what we had before and you'll notice that we're still not going to replace the gatekeeper shield the sakura fubuki is basically it's almost as much as a legendary piece and it's kind of a side upgrade right it's really not worth getting unfortunately so you can basically skip that entirely the only exception to that the only times that you would 
consider using the Sakura Fubuki with the special talent are going to be times where you're running a pair that has an insane amount of infantry health. Like I'm talking like you would have to do like CPO prime with Constantine or something like that. Like, or maybe like in the future, if we get a third upgrade to Mehmed's relic, if it gives him even more health, maybe if you did like a CPO prime primary with Mehmed secondary and he has like his third tier upgrade, maybe then you would consider running the Sakura Fubuki over the gatekeeper shield. But like, that's such a niche scenario that like basically no one's going to be doing that. So just get the gatekeeper shield. Don't even question it. Now your first legendary piece for infantry is probably going to be the hope cloak because you get this from the crystal keys. You're going to get it for free over time. There's going to be different ways that you can get your hands on this. I know that, you know, saying that you get it for free, like the crystal key drop rate is pretty bad, but by the time you get to this point, you'll probably get one eventually from somewhere. And this is the best in slot chest piece for infantry, even without the special talent, it's just going to be better than the talented purple piece in the chest slot because of the stat trade-off. So here you can see that we've got 21% health, 27% defense, 10 and a half percent attack from the helmet. And then the helmet will be the next piece to go. And I'm going to recommend the set piece helmet here. I'm going to get into why in just a second, we will talk about the KVK helmet for those of you that are curious, because I did mention that they changed that you are going to get these KVK pieces a little bit easier now, but for infantry specifically, I am going to recommend the set helmet. And here you can see, we actually lost all of our attack bonus and we are all in on defense and health. And this is a great place to be for infantry, even without the special talents, like you are in a great position. Now, the next three upgrades can kind of be done in any order, but I'm going to start with the boots here for a couple of reasons. First of all, you'll notice that the set piece boots and the special talented frost treads have the same amount of defense. They're seven and a half percent each, but because you already have the set piece helmet, this is going to give you a two piece set bonus, which is going to get you a little bit extra defense on top of all that, which is going to be really nice. You'll notice that the defense went up, I think 3% here. Here. the reason that I would start with the boots is because the iconic upgrades for boots are actually really really good especially for infantry because not only can you get your first iconic upgrade here for health which is gonna be really nice but also as you progress through the iconic tiers for boots you'll see that tier 4 and tier 5 give you extra March speed and that's gonna be super important for infantry later down the line so you will want to start working on that a little bit earlier so all in all the boots are great to upgrade here even without the special talent from there I would recommend going probably for the weapon because I do think that the set piece weapon even though you're trading off 10 and a half percent health for 20 percent attack attack is technically a worse stat for infantry but it is like double the amount of stats which is great and it's going to allow you to get eventually the four piece set bonus here for infantry which is going to give you 10 percent March speed which is very important for infantry we're not going to see that in the stat buffs here but this is like you are really really gold in once you get to this point 41% defense 10 and percent health 20% attack and 10% March speed with five legendary pieces you can have five iconic crystals into this set and you're going to get the extra base stats for your infantry which is going to be beautiful honestly at this point I would start to work on accessories over like the upgrade for the legs here some good starter accessories are going to be the ancient stratagems and the silent trial especially if you can get a talent on both of them ancient stratagems is like the poor man's ring of doom because it literally lets you bring more troops to the battlefield which is literally just more damage and so that's beautiful if you are having trouble getting your hands on ancient stratagem blueprints to get the special talent there you could of course use the delane's amulet or for infantry specifically we have the wind scars which actually gives you eight percent march speed even without the talent so this is definitely something worth considering again if you're struggling to get your hands on some of the other epic pieces in the accessory slots for example i can imagine a world where a brand new free to play player is struggling to get their hands on some of the epic accessory blueprints in the early game and they want to use the silent trial for something like their cavalry set and if they only have one silent trial and one ancient stratagems maybe they'll put those on like let's say their cavalry set and then for their infantry set they would do the wind scars for the march speed and the delane's amulet here because i mean this is just generally a tanky march anyway so you're gonna get more benefit out of the reduced counterattack damage but if we're talking about best in slot in terms of 
damage and debuffs this would be the way to go from here I would actually recommend continuing to upgrade the accessories because again those legs I mean unless you've got a ton of the eternal light blueprints just lying around you really can just sit on these legs for a long time it'll be fine I think ring of doom is a great first piece to craft for infantry because you can either use it on a smite damage army or you can use it on a skill damage army it's going to boost the damage either way if you're building an army that is focused more on skill damage you would do something like the ring and the horn if you're running something like William Wallace with Liu Che for example or Liu Che with Alex or CPO Prime with Liu Che basically if Liu Che is involved okay then you can run something along the lines of greatest glory with the dagger because these just work really well with Liu Che and his expertise specifically for the dagger of course you're going to put an iconic crystal into both of them because that's going to give you the iconic health base stats which is super important honestly for infantry which accessories you run depends on your army so that's kind of a micro optimization there accessories for infantry are slightly more finicky than accessories for the other troop types but no matter what accessories you put on your infantry eventually you will upgrade your legs to the eternal knights and from there you're going to have your maximum base stats and then at that point you can start to do the iconic upgrades now when it comes to iconic upgrades for this set the things that you should be prioritizing are probably the boots first of all because you get extra March speed on iconic four and five which I talked about earlier but that bonus March speed is really valuable for infantry I also would consider doing some iconic upgrades for your weapon as well because the iconic upgrades that you get here are just point for point higher than your other pieces it might cost more materials than some of your other pieces but point for point you are getting more here from this slot if you're upgrading this ignoring enemy health is great extra troop capacity is great so I really like the iconic path for the weapon also something that was discovered recently specifically with the helmet upgrades from an iconic perspective is that the iconic five helmet upgrade shattering strike actually increases smite damage as well now I know it says you have a 10 percent chance to increase the next skill damage it deals by five percent but that is literally just wrong there will probably be a change to this text or this wording in the near future but it has been tested it has been confirmed with support this is definitely boosting your smite damage skill shots as far as I know this boosts the smite damage of an active skill not necessarily an instant proc smite shot so there are still some things that I don't know for sure about this hopefully the devs will give us a little bit more clarity but from what we can tell this will at least increase the smite damage of the active skills so definitely worth considering getting this especially for Liu Che especially if you have the KVK helmet with the special talent because the bonus on the KVK helmet is even higher now when it comes to the hope cloak you really don't have to bring it past iconic upgrade three because four is damage to rallied armies and garrisons so unless you are a rally or garrison leader or you like to swarm down rallies or garrisons then really for open field fighting iconic four doesn't do anything for you here which is unfortunate and then Vengeful strike itself is just not good enough to justify the massive cost here this is probably the last piece you would get to iconic five so boots weapon and helmet are some of the highest priority for infantry chest being lowest priority and then between legs and gloves I would say you know probably if you have the eternal light then you probably would have already wanted to do at least two upgrades here from the iconic perspective just to make sure that they're better than the Karak's humility so probably prioritizing legs over gloves is is good but really like these two don't move the needle as much as the other three pieces here as an open field fighter this would be like the ideal end goal with icon full iconics and everything again accessories are subject to change depending on which army you're using assuming you're using Liu Che though I think these are perfectly fine pieces to run you could also switch this out for the ring of doom as well if you wanted to do that it's up to you or you could use that ring on something else because you probably don't have that many rings especially if you're a new player the last thing I want to mention about accessories is that while putting an iconic crystal into the accessories is a priority because you can move those accessories from different troop types right like this is generic troop based health so if this is on a cavalry march it's cavalry health if it's on an infantry march it's infantry health and so like the priority here is very high but going beyond iconic one for accessories should probably be the last thing that you do because really I mean if you look at this this is 35 legendary materials for one percent bonus health now it is generic but that is literally a almost an, a whole other piece right if we look at forging like legendary gloves for example this is 40 legendary materials 
for a whole extra piece right and you could get a special talent on there and so like there's a whole thing but really it is like super super expensive to do the accessory iconic upgrades and so for me personally like this is going to be sort of the last part of my equipment progression because it's just so so expensive this brings our final stat distribution to 69.5 percent defense 26 percent attack you'll have the 10 percent march speed from the four piece set bonus you'll also have five percent march speed from iconic four boots and five percent march speed outside of alliance territory with iconic five boots plus all the other bonuses from the iconic upgrades now if you're running two infantry armies then most likely what you want to do is have as few overlapping pieces as possible between those two armies right because again the blueprints are going to be your bottleneck as you progress through these systems because you need a lot of extra blueprints to get those iconic upgrades and so ideally you would want to have a different helmet on both sets a different weapon on both sets different chest and legs and all that stuff between the both sets so with that in mind what would be an ideal second set of infantry be well we talked earlier about the kvk helmet and weapon and if you are a rally lead or a garrison lead then you really actually prefer the kvk pieces over the four piece set bonus because again for a garrison you don't care about the 10 percent march speed you would rather have the higher stats right and the kvk pieces are just objectively better so if you're going to build a rally or garrison set you're going to use the kvk pieces and if you're going to build two infantry sets then one of those sets will probably include the kvk pieces as well now i want to be very clear if you're building only one infantry set and it's only for open field fighting this is the set that i would recommend the march speed is very valuable i really like this a lot you have two pieces that come from crystal keys and again the accessories will depend on what army you're actually running but for example if you were running like one cpo then you would do something like this right and that that's how that would change most people aren't running one cpo as a single infantry army so there's that but just to give you an idea this is how that would look now as you're building your second set of infantry gear if you do decide to do that from start through epic pieces the upgrade progress is all going to be the same the only thing that changes are your end game pieces right so in a world where you're going to be using a kvk weapon and a kvk helmet here well now you've already lost the four piece set bonus but you'll notice that even without the special talents here the stat breakdown is very similar you lose one percent attack but you gain half a percent of defense strictly because the helmet just has so much defense so out of the box you're going to be moving slower on the field but you'll have about the same amount of stats without having to worry about those special talents but then the question becomes do you still run the set piece gloves and boots and the answer really depends I think right now if you're a whale player or you've had tons of time to gather all your blueprints then it would be best in slot to have the two piece set bonus here because you do get bonus defense from that two piece set bonus so that would be ideal to run it like this and then eventually you just talent these two and you're popping off literal giga chad but you also might have a lot of the sacred grips and shio's return from both the crystal keys and also shio's return you can get for free you can get 30 fragments every single kvk from the lost canyon shop right and so in this scenario where you're gonna have probably a bunch of these blueprints just lying around you could consider iconic upgrading these pieces because then again like i said before you'll have four of your pieces the weapon helmet gloves and boots that are not the same between your two infantry armies right your first army will have the four piece set bonus your second army if you're running low on your blueprints for the gloves and the boots then I could see a world where you run this right because point for point yes you lose the two piece set bonus which means you lose three percent defense but these pieces actually have an extra half percent defense on each of them and so really you're only losing two percent defense but the trade-off is that you're gonna have a lot easier of a time iconic upgrading these pieces and also progressing them through the special talent system especially with Shio's return and so I can definitely see a world where a free-to-play player would go ahead and do this as opposed to having the two-piece set bonus now again even with this build I would recommend going for the iconic upgrades for the boosts first because this is again going to give you the March speed and you are losing the 10 percent March speed without the set bonus here so you probably want to go for that as soon as possible I have my Shio's return at iconic five because I'm a lunatic and I also had a bunch of those blueprints just lying around so I figured I would go for them but from there again you do want to probably prioritize the weapon and the helmet because they're kvk pieces they will just give you you more value from an iconic upgrade perspective and so you would want to go for those first and then from there you'll go for the special talent on all these pieces and you would be literally popping off so this would be your second set of infantry again if you want to use the crystal key pieces 
for the gloves and the boots technically speaking the set pieces are still best in slot you just get extra defense right so you know if you're looking for the most amount of stats this would be the way to go now a third option and we're really getting into the weeds now would be doing the leadership legs and boots with the special talent for infantry and this would give you 18 and a half percent health but you would be losing 25 and a half percent defense so I don't know if that is necessarily like an obvious upgrade over something like this intuitively it feels like it would be but then you have to consider the fact that a lot of infantry garrisons already have a lot of health like if we're talking about something with Zenobia right which I know we're starting to see less and less of Zenobia as we see more and more of Gorgo with like Heraclius or something like that but historically if the infantry garrison has a ton of health then you might be better off with the bonus to the defense as well or the trade-off might not be super obvious right and even from a rally perspective we know that CPO Emilianus has 30 percent infantry health on the rally so again it's not immediately obvious to me that the bigger defense trade-off would be definitely always worth it for the less health from the leadership set now again I do want to just be very clear I'm not a rally or garrison lead so this video is not really supposed to be for rally and garrison players but I do at least want to cover it here like if that's something that you are considering this is probably the best way to go but I could see people making a strong argument for the leadership two piece as well but it is also worth noting that the legs and boots for the glorious goddess set give you generic health not just infantry health so from a garrison perspective I know that sometimes as you start to get into the later stages of kvk sometimes it's hard to do a pure garrison of just infantry sometimes you are stacking some calves and some archers in there and in that case then you probably would prefer to have the generic health here because that's just going to help that garrison for all the troop types that aren't actually infantry so keep that in mind same thing with like the gloves for example if you're running like a very mixed garrison then maybe you would consider swapping out for the gauntlets of the glorious goddess because they are still giving defense it's less than for the infantry gloves but it is generic staff so that way again if there are some calves or archers in that garrison at least they're getting a benefit too but this is again strictly if you do run a little bit of mix in there I I really don't think that the glorious goddess gloves are something that people consider that much now it is also worth noting that if you are rally or garrison lead you probably will change up the accessories as well for example a lot of garrisons with Gorgo use the lucky coin but just to recap open field here this is a set that I would use if I was running something like Liu Che with Alexander the Great or even CPO Prime with Liu Che or Liu Che with William Wallace right this would probably be my go-to set there and then if I'm running a second infantry set for example Guan Yu with CPO Prime then I would run something like this because the four piece set bonus is going to be a little bit more valuable on the Guan CPO because they are going to have in general less March speed than something like Liu Che with Alex right Liu Che Alex has like 50 percent March speed or something insane like that whereas the Guan CPO only has 30 percent total March speed and 40 outside of Alliance territory so being the slower of the two options you would want to sort of benefit from that four piece set bonus there obviously I think that makes a lot of sense and of course then your accessories won't overlap so the progression for iconics for both sets is going to be pretty good anyway guys with that being said if you made it to the end of the video please consider dropping a thumbs up on it it really helps out the channel a ton it'll help get this video out into the YouTube algorithm and also consider subscribing to the channel while you're down there and click the bell to be notified the next time I upload a rise of kingdoms video if you guys want me to do an updated guide for archers and for cavalry comment down below the troop type that gets the most comments is going to be the one that I upload next so definitely comment down below and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been Omniarch I will talk to you guys again soon peace